Let me give you the rundown. First and foremost, it still is a concert. Please do not talk while any of the groups are performing. There'll be plenty of time to uh, to gab and whatever between numbers. Food, such as it is, is indeed self-service. Right through those doors there, across the hall, we politely ask that you do it between groups or at least between between numbers and not get up in the middle of the number. Thank you. Uh, I know I'm forgetting something critically important, but I can't remember what it is, so who cares? <laughs> There's a limit. I have, my brain is filled with facts. There's a drunk room for any more. A quick word of note about this uh, first piece. March of the Steel Men, kind of an unusual march. The march was thought of, I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm kind of waiting for quiet. The march was thought of by the president of the Steel Mill, I had to have a name for it, uh, Charles Bestelain. Made out of, just as a large Midwestern steel mill. And supposedly, he was, a, he was the CEO, and while he walked around the steel mill, he heard music in the sounds of the steel mill. Now, the piece has a special place for me in a way because my father worked in the steel mill all his life. I was there once. I didn't hear any music, but boy, I sure heard sounds. Lots of fun sounds. Well, this guy heard music in those sounds. Paul, a uh, composer by the name of Harry L. Alford and supposedly sat in his office and whistled and hummed these tunes that he heard. The guy couldn't read the music. And that's where this march came from. And to show you how uh, times have changed, this is in the original notes, it is probably safe to assume that the march was written by Besseling, was, was written for Besseling's own company band. I don't know how many steel mills have their own band these days, but they did back in the 30s, I guess. So here it is, opening a pop. Right. Thank you.
That's a, that's a nice piece. I like that. Now, remember about 15 minutes ago, I said it was something really, really important. I remembered what it is. Actually, Erin reminded me. She's a senior. She's already for college. Okay. Uh, in figuring out the logistics for this thing, a lot of things were talked about, thought about, do this, do that, move this. Forgot one little, not so minor detail. Several of these young people in the course of the evening are signed up for cleanup tomorrow here at 930. They know who they are and they'd better be here at 9.30. Actually, a couple of minutes before 9.30 would be nice. It won't take long. Folks, here's my problem, and maybe some of you lovely parents would like to help me too. We have two full truckloads of things to take back to the high school. I don't have anyone at the high school to carry them back inside except me and my shotgun driver. I need a crew of people at Walpole High School I figure the first truckload will be about 10 o'clock, the second truckload about 20, 25 minutes after that. Uh, if you're signed up for cleanup, still come clean up here, but please, please uh, ask your lovely child tonight, because there's, a lot, there's, there's very little things that are heavy, but there's so much of it. So if I can have a crew, if some parents would like to help, I'd be very grateful. 10 o'clock at the high school, wait for the truck. Truck comes back, that's it. So hopefully I'll see some people there at 10 o'clock. All right, last tune. You see it in your program and it don't mean a thing. Wait a minute, it don't mean a thing. Oh, this group needs work.
Oh, we played this at the spring concert for those of you who were there. This is a uh, tone poem, a musical depiction of a day of whitewater rafting from the early sunrise in the morning to the to the nice white water and then over the waterfall and all the rest of the stuff. Sit back, close your eyes. Here we go. Okay, now it's my turn for the microphone. He's got it. Um, as always, like this. As always, I've had a great four years in band, and I'm really glad I stayed with it. And as a little thank you present from the whole band, we have something new for the new band room. And the new band room. That will be there in I don't know how many years. <laughs> we won't go there, don't worry. Don't talk about it. <laughs> Ooh, this, this feels fragile. Open it. I should open this. this, this this is this as fragile as it feels? No. Okay, all right, it, no, it feels, okay. You know, you know me. I will read the card in private if that's okay. That's something I do and I like to pen. Oh, it's not fragile. This is just a sign that we got him oh, to put on the door. Okay, he'll show you. Thank you all very much. It will go up in it now. Do I have to wait to the new band room? Yes. We also made you a card and had everyone sign it. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, is, this, this is one of my favorite things to do on Saturday. No, it, it is. I read these when I get home, and it, they, no, they really mean a lot to me. The gifts mean a lot to me. All the things do, but these, yeah, just these you put down what you want. Thank you all, despite my occasional complaint. Good year.
awe of this mysterious man and his booming voice that echoed throughout the corridor. And I had no idea then that he would have such a great impact on my life a few years later. Falford's graph exterior was enough to keep any freshman at bay for the first few days of school, but they always realized quickly that it was just a facade and that the man behind it was easy to become close with. He truly connected with us and understood us, and even had the same taste in TV shows as some of us. For example, his love of awkward. <laughs> I find explaining the influence he had on me almost impossible, as I cannot find strong enough words to say how thankful I am for him. He inspired me and many other students to go up <laughs> to pursue music in college. Because of him, I will be following my dream and studying musical theater for the next four years. It's hard to think of any one memory or story because so many come to mind, such as his Popeye impression he did whenever he had a cold, so his voice was impossible, even lower, or him reading us our horoscopes on days we had him for lunch block, grumbling about the boring ones and smirking at those who had love in the stars. <laughs> All I can say is, thank you so much, Mr. Conker. You left a trail of students behind you who will continue to pursue the arts you fought so fervently for and inspired us all to become greater musicians. He also so Falker's memory has been referenced thousands of times in the past month and a half through flourishes of emails and phone calls to sharing each and every one of our fondest individual memories with colleagues, classmates, and family. To simple dedications at the spring concert, middle school strings night, and the one you are listening to now. One of the most complicated endeavors we have faced over the past month has been finding the proper approach to commemorating and remembering an outstanding teacher, mentor, colleague, friend, and above all, a first-rate musician, whose kindness and fierce passion for the art of music are far beyond the grasp of words alone. Our memories reside in every corner of the music room, in every fresh page of printed music, in every German opera that somehow finds its way onto the classical radio station, and in every time we musicians sit down to practice or look up at the conductor's baton held high over our heads, we will always remember the man who filled our high school um, music career with the greatest memories and the most beautiful music. So thank you, Mr. Felger, for everything you have given us this year.